I introduce ourselves as being loaded. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm Pei, I'm one of the ophthalmologists in Moorfield in London. And this is Maria, my colleague also in Moorfield, also an ophthalmologist. Nigel is our tech guru for the afternoon. Sarah <laughs> was the uh, intensivist that was participating as a team member, but she couldn't make it today, um, unfortunately. And we also met honorary mention Ian, who's in the background, who helped us with a tech question as well. So we are Help Me Help You. Um, we're here to facilitate patient-doctor communication. Next, please. Uh, so, as human beings, we love telling stories, right? And the more sensationalized your story, the better. But we're not very good at recalling detail and frequency and stuff. So, for example, I, a lot of us might have said, I drank so much coffee, the last 24 hours I had an astonishing headache, <laughs> right? How many coffees did you actually drink yesterday? Or was it that one beer that gave you the headache this morning, right? So, but unfortunately, what doctors need, or clinicians need, is we need that numerical quantitative data to reach a diagnosis. So it's often very difficult to extrapolate that. And what happens is we take history, and we say, okay, is it every day? Is, then, then we lead on to the next problem, is that to, for us to elucidate the details, we may lead with questions, however unintended and the patient will feel like they need to collude with us with the story. Um, even, even, even uh, they could be because they feel they need to say yes to the questions we ask, or they want that antibiotic, so if you're gonna ask me about green sputum, I'm gonna say yes to that answer. And then it can lead to wrong diagnosis or the wrong treatment. Next. So we lost in translation, so we defined our problem with both our um, clinicians and Nigel, um, and basically what we wanted to do is um, we want to translate narrative data to, yeah, uh, and into a quantitative, a temporally accurate data. So what we need is a translator of some sort. Okay, next please. Um, so the idea is to design a tool, an application that will be easily accessible through the phone, iPad, smartwatch, Patients can log in their symptoms that can be one or more happening at the same time or different time during the day, and they can be tracking down the starting time, the duration, the severity, what exactly they were doing at the time, and where, where, where they were at uh, the time of the event. And then Nigel can. Hopefully. <laughs> this is where we find out how, how, if I'm a tech guru or not. Right, so this is what we kind of, I kind of hacked together, literally, hopefully. This will work. Ooh. No, it doesn't work. <laughs> don't know why it does this. I'm going to try refreshing it. Um, typically, it works on my machine. What well, I would typically say is it works on my machine, not on anybody else's. We have a really good little app. It's really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> don't your machine. machine. Yeah. Do a band for a bit? Huh? Does anybody, has anybody any? Are there more slides? Or? Have you oh, any more slides that you want to go through and then we can come back to this? Slide, which we, I mean, we can, we get this working, I can talk. That HDMI is outside. Yeah. 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 Trying to slide the thing in the right it's way, like does like help. Like USB. <laughs> it's always yeah. one whichever you can put it in. <laughs> right. Yay, right. So that, the idea is that the screen will appear and stay there. Right. So the idea is that the um, start off the person enters in what symptoms they've got um, for the particular condition they're talking about. So we put in um, eye strain and we add that to the symptom list and it disappears again. It's so, okay. Um, head. Headache. So those are the symptoms they've got they're going to add in initially, and then they go through the normal day, do whatever they're doing, and suddenly they get, oh, actually that, that headache's come back again. And they get the app out and they go, right, where am I? Oh, I'm, I'm at home, I am watching TV, upon my writing, because I'm typing too quickly, and then I pick, okay, what have I got? I've got a headache. I can then say, okay, how, how bad is my headache? Actually, it's quite bad at the moment. Um, they can add, oh, I've got a bit of eye strain as well, out of my symptoms. I may or may not have eye strain, but that's not really that bad actually, um, upon the debug window appearing on the side, that they can submit that. Um, obviously it records date time and when they do it, 
and then that that data collates over time. Um, and then if we go back to the um, slideshow again, so back here, so there is a thing. So the sorry. idea is they might input their symptoms in the beginning. So for example, they've gone to their GP already with a set of symptoms. So they can use this app to record, okay, well, I'm going to preset the symptom I'm experiencing, but I need to record the frequency and diary of it. Then uh, they can then uh, preset those symptoms. And when they want to record, then they can select as the best demo. The idea, so that's what we achieved, what's your plan, Joe? Achieved. Achieved amazingly over the weekend. And the I idea is... Okay. Oh, just, just. Microphone. Microphone. Microphone, sorry, yeah. And, and the idea is that it will then collate and go up to the uh, open air um, medical records. So when I then go to my specialist, I don't have to recall what's been happening last six months about my eye strain, my headache. I, I you know, sometimes I often I ask questions like, you know, is there any triggers in all patients? Um, okay. So. Like, we got magic yeah, you are, we go. uh, so the uh, Envision dashboard will come up like this, so that it's visible to you on your whatever object you have, or visible to uh, and visible to the clinician, um, and it should be integratable into different cloud base or hopefully into different each EHRs. But the idea is, I will show you like, right? Okay, you collected over the last months, and you you can actually see seventy percent is headache, is main symptom, dry the straining is not actually that bad. Your eye strain uh, is worse when you do screen work, when you're reading, it's not so much when you're relaxing. It's getting it was getting worse and you had a you went to see the doctor, they told you to just stop watching the screen. Actually it comes down and actually it's building up again. Why? Because you're doing your taxes and you're doing more screen work again. So it kind of gives the patient a bit of a opportunity to observe, quantifies the symptoms of the doctor and <coughs> the last slide, can we steal one minute? <laughs> Very quickly, <laughs> moving in forwards, um, potentially this information can be linked into the patient's NHS app, can identify trends, suggest lifestyle changes, uh, patients can get push notifications to get their breaks, drink their water, go out for a walk, can be possibly activated via, via Siri uh, and get reminders like, do you still have a headache? Do you still have a problem going on? So the patients are prompted to add more information. And finally, more big data will be available for further analysis in the future that will help uh, with new diagnosis. Okay. So yeah, thank you. Well done. You're probably most on time for everybody today. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Even with all the technical kind of uh, challenges. So judges, questions? Thank you very much. Um, Obviously, there, there's there are quite a few sort of symptom tracking type apps, or if you, you know, if you put symptom tracking into the app store, you probably get a few coming up. Have you um, have you thought about, uh, or is there anything about your approach that you think might make it easier for people to engage with symptom tracking, uh, make it easier for them to remember to do it? Um, you know, I think I think you sort of alluded to it with the record, the sim setting the symptoms up front and then recording it. You know, I'd just be interested to hear how you might um, sort of get people to be a bit more compliant with the symptom tracking? So I think, yeah. sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I think in the, cons uh, the idea is, so we were discussing digital inclusion in a way and how to people who are unable to implement apps and stuff. So in, for, for where we work, eye hospitals, it's difficult to actually input yeah. things. So the idea is actually possibly this could be um, developed into a, a voice activated app. So if you link to Siri, link to Alexa, and then there's an, another thing we were considering. If I implemented a headache now, and I forgot to implement actually the headache is done, then it does lose a bit of data on that. So perhaps a serial reminder, a push notification can say, set in 15 minutes. Are you still having the headache? No. Uh, so voice activate is something probably the next step to prompt people to engage um, and to get clearer Next data. Oh, yeah, just <laughs> quickly add that, at least to my knowledge, there is no other uh, eye-related tracking system. Uh, maybe wrong, but at least that's what I think. Um, also, we worked, with, we worked with Ian as well uh, to look at Open EHR, which is a, a repository for data for the NHS. So the idea would be that in the gap between you're getting your referral and having your appointment, that data would go from the app into the NHS system, basically, that's the idea. So you could actually see it. Um, so it's not a, it's not a random thing where Google gets the data. 
it's the NHS getting the data and the, the, the specialist getting the data at the end of the day. That's <laughs> part, of the, part of the key of it as well. Can I just Oh, oh sorry. Static, sorry. Mm -hmm. so one last point. Uh, I think about engagement. So the last slide was the tracking of the um, uh, symptoms and how it changes <coughs> over time. We're hoping that actually invites the patient to learn about their own symptoms. So if they can see, uh, sometimes patients, uh, when they're experiencing that headache, that one symptom, they can't move away on from thinking it's the worst thing and it's all the time. But actually, if you present with the data and they can engage better with treatment, because actually when I take this medication, I can see my curve going down. Uh, when I do take breaks, I can see that going down. So we're hoping that will encourage engagement because of that feedback loop. Nice. Any other questions? No? Okay. Nice. Anybody else in the audience got a question? Okay. Uh, thank you. I like to represent the elderly again. <laughs> it's, this is, it sounds fantastic, but I think for the elderly people, this could be quite uh, challenging to be doing this and uh, checking even how, they, how they're progressing. So have you sort of looked at that to see how you can make it more user-friendly for them? So that question came up really early on with discussing options with Nigel and also my own granny as well. So yes, I think the technology that what we could achieve with the weekend is phone. Um, but it could be as easy as a button to push that you can talk to. It could be a telephone, we can modify it to think about adapting it to technology that people are familiar with already. So even my 90 year old grandpa can work a telephone, right? Could we have a telephone that rings that so it adapts to what they're used to and we inbuilt the technology into something they're familiar with so they will engage. So it could be anything, really. So it could you know, a button that they can just push, build into that panic button, build into their jacket, something. But I think the, the <coughs> idea of recording the sentiment, stop and start recording, will be the same. It's just how they can use it as a sensor to be but developed. Last last quick question. Ian? Just, just on behalf of the elderly, we, are, <laughs> I mean, we think of that there is a generation coming through that have lived half their lives, right? and certainly the one behind me is definitely going to be completely digitally illiterate. So with that, you know, these are clearly perfectly sensible. But one of the things we actually did in the previous hack day was to use Alexa. Yeah. So I, like, I know there's lots of security and concerns, but it's quite easy to program to say, you know, my pain is 10 today. Um, and that, that is because it's quite a natural way to interact and I'm sure a lot of elderly people like me use Alexa to <laughs> be part of shopping on it. I'm going to give you the last word of <laughs> and Thank you for your presentation. So just really quickly, so I've understood, is your proposal that this solution would be utilised after someone had been to see you or had called and said these are the symptoms and then you ask them almost use it as a diary in essence is that your thing because i'm just thinking if somebody had put something in and actually there was a flag or a concern that oh gosh i need to actually go and seek help it's not like the one on one tracker it's almost a, a, a diary kind of type is that yeah. Kind of yes correct? Yeah. okay yeah thank you just wanted to check well done thank you very much